to receive the right worship for Lord Mayor of Liverpool, Councillor Malcolm Kennedy. Thank you for the invite. I'm trying to be loud for this group as well. 
<laughs> Come on, Jane. A few years ago, I visited Hull just before their City of Culture bid was announced. That great news which produced this season's top Hull City tennis tournament to visiting football fans. Here for the culture, you're only here for the culture. A number of local councillors there were apprehensive about what was to come. And I was able to infuse and reassure them. How? Because I'd been to Liverpool. And I'd seen what a council and a city devoted to the idea that culture is a city's lifeblood can do. As actors, we're sometimes in a very privileged position. Our work can affect people and they can let us know. Even by something as simple as being applauded at the end of our day's work, which many people don't get. I sometimes get letters from people saying they've enjoyed, enjoyed what I've done, even if it's only playing a philandra on Mr. Silfridge. The National Campaign for the Arts and What Next set up Hearts for the Arts to show our appreciation of people who might not get much applause on fan mail, but whose work we love because it's a vital part of what keeps us human and delighted. This Hearts for the Arts Award is going to someone very special, Councillor Wendy Simon, Assistant Mayor of the City Council, Cabinet Member for Culture, Tourism and Events, Trustee of the Everyman and the Playhouse. I'm going to give you a few highlights from her extensive citation. In 2012, Wendy oversaw Sea Odyssey, a giant spectacular which brought three Royal Deluxe giants to Liverpool streets for three days. It also brought almost a million visitors to Liverpool and media attention from around the world. The economic impact was massive. Liverpool businesses reported a 29% rise in trade. Wendy oversees the distribution of funds from Liverpool City Council to cultural organisations. The social impact of these programmes served Liverpool's diverse communities. They include the UK's largest African festival, Africa Oye, which attracts over 40,000 people every summer, and the Pagoda Chinese Youth Orchestra that proudly represents Liverpool's Chinese community locally and internationally. Wendy's work ensures that all cultural organisations funded by Liverpool City Council engage hard to reach and underrepresented groups. Every council needs somebody like Wendy. In words of one syllable, she gets it. She's a tireless advocate for culture. She's worked across an incredible range of projects and events. This is from Jenna Bodden. Artistic Director of the Everyman of Paris. Wendy's been a trustee of our theatres for several years. Her support for all we do might be assumed in this context. But what makes her a deserved recipient of this award is her encouragement for artistic bravery and thinking big. The city has a flourishing cultural sector, and that's due in no small part to Wendy quietly but consistently believing in its transformational power. The sort of things that Wendy champions are exactly the sort of things the NCA loves. They prove that the arts are for everyone, not just shouting in the evenings for posh people, and for participating in, not just spectating. We've always believed that art can enrich people's everyday lives, improve health and well-being, and make life less boring. Wendy lives that belief. Now, I got a council tax bill from Islington, where I live recently, that showed that they lost 60% of their central government funding in 10 years. I know the picture elsewhere is sometimes even worse. In extremely trying circumstances, we know how much this council and its partners are doing to keep arts and culture at the heart of your community. Wendy's work, and the good it does, is enabled by the decisions to support arts and culture that you make in this chamber. Please, please keep making them. At the heart of these awards is love. And we make no apology for that. We love you, we love what you're doing, and we want you to keep doing it. This very shiny, very pink award is designed to draw all eyes so that wherever Wendy chooses to display it, we hope it cries out to have a neighbour. The nominations for next year's Hearts for the Arts Awards open next month. And now it gives me great pleasure to present the 2017 Hearts of the Arts Award for Best Local Authority Arts Champion to Councillor Wendy Sun.
thanks uh, to everybody who's made this award possible. I think everybody in the city knows that the commitment that Mayor Anderson has made to the arts goes above and beyond. And I think his phrase, which you loved, I know that it is the rock and field of regeneration in our city is clear everywhere you go, both within the city centre and out into our communities. And the work that started from European Capital Culture 2008 is truly embedded, and we'll see that next year when we have 10 years celebrations since then and seeing how far. But I think that has also encouraged lots of local councillors to engage in work within their wards, within the arts and sports and culture, and that is fantastic too, of the range of activities that take place. But well, it's not just the arts and cultural organisations that make this happen, it's a whole council event. Every department in this city council has had some involvement in us achieving where we are today. Lots of people that you don't see in planning, in highways, in licensing, in legal, all of those that make all those events that we have that are spectacular possible. Lots of people who are out there making sure, you know, sort of that these events take place safely and also the most important thing is that people have a great time, which we know that they do. So although this award is being named for me, I think this award is a tribute to every single person who represents the city and every single person who works in the city council. So for you, I think it should be the biggest applause. So thanks for that.
I'm here today seeking your support for the Vision Zero motion, which you will consider later this evening. Although proposed by the Green Party, it could have been penned by any group currently represented on the City Council. Indeed, who here would not set zero as the goal for deaths and serious injuries on our roads? It has often been said that the ultimate penalty of death should not result from the most trivial of lapses of concentration. Yet our current transport culture appears to tolerate a mix where occupants of fast and heavy vehicles can run alongside those that are slower, vulnerable, and unprotected, leaving little margin for error. <coughs> for, for too long, this infrastructure has supported a terrible and lasting toll of death and injury, which has simply been accepted. Seemingly easier, more convenient and cheaper than fabricating an alternative. It must, though, be clear to all in this room that the legacy of Merseyside's appalling road KSI figures is neither sustainable nor acceptable. Today's safety in aviation, <coughs> in healthcare, and in the railways reflects the implementation of safe systems. Now, Sweden's total safe systems concept has shown the mitigating impact of intense cooperation across police, planners, and highways engineers <coughs> on the safety of road transport. The Vision Zero proposal reflects only what has happened in London, Vienna, and many other places, including 25 US cities. Vision Zero is a goal that prioritizes the protection of vulnerable people, whether walking, cycling, or mobility impaired. It drives targets that curtail the misery of death and injury. It reduces the work and cost of accident and emergency departments <coughs> and benefits public health medicine by removing the paralysis of daily fear, liberating millions of city dwellers through the oxygen of active travel. Indeed, the new Liverpool City Region Road Safety Strategy includes a commitment to a vision of zero road deaths. It was unanimously agreed at the combined authority on 14th of July this year, where there was Liverpool City Council representation. The Police and Crime Commissioner, Jane Kennedy, has added her support by way of a fifth priority, committing the police force to road safety policies. For the sake of the people and visitors of this great city, I urge you to lend your strongest support to the motion before you. In common with policymakers around the world, please vote this evening for the irrefutable goal of a vision of zero deaths and serious injuries <coughs> on our roads. Thank you for listening.
within what we, we should also do, take it to the relevant select committee neighbourhoods, the examination select committee, to look at how we can actually uh, learn from what's happening in the cities and see if there's things that we can do. I think that's just as important as giving lip service to it. I don't like just backing motions and saying they're backing them without a plan of action. So what I commit to is that we uh, look at how we develop a report that we can bring back to council to look at what actions we can take to improve safety and also uh, not just for cyclists but for people to go back to public sleep. Perhaps we think right that council should be concerned about the number of cars on our roads. Cars are now, you know, we used to see one car per family, we now see three cars, four cars, cars are really cheap. Uh, and the values of people are lost. So we've got to look at that, we've got to look at Missions and problems, and so, so happy to, to look at that and develop a policy. With all the agreements of the council, not just on safety, but on the building environment. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have received a second statement from Mary Emery and Dave Kelly from the United Union in relation to motion 17 on the agenda. Uh, can I invite Mary and Dave to address the council? Radio on the Liverpool TV. 
The daughter says that her mum should have died with dignity and not death. Um, what we're asking for was firstly the readers to be heard, that never got heard. ISS still in more that readers, even with what happened to the reader. We were left then with no option but to go to the public with a petition asking them to support, which is what brought us to the council. In a matter of weeks, over 5,000 members of the public, doctors, nurses, and patients, as well as staff at the hospital, signed our petition. All of them upset and outraged that somebody could be treated this way. We eventually tipped up the council, um, and it was like pushing on the door. The councillors were horrified by what had happened and offered support as well. So, and it's the motion saying that we put before you. Um, but we just want to thank everybody so far for their support. Um, we do intend to look to other councils after because we do need to make sure that this can't happen. We're not asking for six months holiday pay. We're asking for sick pay for sick people. You know, we expect it to be managed by every company who has sick people. We don't expect sick people to be punished. <coughs>
that get them to change their mind and we we'll do it in the name of Frida and it's absolutely right that we do that. Because I think it confirms the whole chamber is united in support you know, for all parties, uh, which means that, that you know, we can send a clear message to uh, the chief executive of the Royal that we uh, want uh, action and we want uh, immediate action. Just one thing, just digressing slightly from, from the issue, it's always great to see Dave Kelly here, and uh, I think it's important for us also to recognise uh, the important work that Dave does, not only in his trade union work, but in support and collection for food banks across the city. So thank you, Dave, on the other. Service, also with uh, the Solace 
uh, trade union, uh, as I said, with the LTA, and more importantly, taking uh, sound legal advice from the city solicitor and also uh, from independent uh, legal advice. I think members are, are aware, of course, that the appointments of disability panel met on Monday uh, after deliberating carefully uh, the situation that we're in. The panel agreed that an independent assessment and investigation be carried out into the issues uh, with regards to the reputational impacts on the city at this current time. In agreeing uh, that process, uh, the panel also took a decision to suspend the chief executive, which I must stress as a neutral act. It's in the interest of uh, natural justice and to protect the integrity and objectivity of the investigation uh, that is important that the whole city council and its members take very great care uh, when we address this uh, particular issue or talk about this matter. I'm committed more uh, uh, to the transparency and I will keep the council updated as I've done so far. But as I said, I would remind uh, members as well that we have a duty of care as council uh, to all of our employees. It's important that as in the individual's employment is dealt with fairly and that matters are kept confidential, particularly where the investigation or investigations are ongoing and it's not appropriate uh, to deal with these matters in the press. Uh, and today, Lord Mayor, I held uh, a meeting with leaders, uh, confidential meeting with leaders, uh, just to discuss with them the current situation and of course remind them of our obligation uh, towards all employees. Uh, conference season is, is, is a, a start of that long day and uh, I was amazed uh, to see uh, the little camp that, that, that conference kick off with uh, Nick Clegg um, saying that Labour and the Labour Party was demonising austerity, he, he said, and of course um, it was him in 2013 at his conference told uh, the whole country that we had to back austerity and, and of course we've got uh, one of the Lib Dem councillors here telling uh, look for the people to get over the cuts. Um, so, uh, as I said, we'll see um, how we, we deal with the 90 million cuts that we have to face over the next three years. And of course, we'll bring you uh, at the next council meeting an update as to where we are in, in, in the period uh, before Christmas. So, we'll give you an update on, on that. But well, it's, it's also uh, worthwhile. Uh, we just point out a, a number of things as to where we are and what I said at the last council meeting um, and also in between the two council meetings. If, if, uh, and, and that's an update in terms of things that are going on. One of the uh, things that I said I would give an update on when we would produce a report was into the August Hope and Glory Festival uh, which ran into uh, difficulties. I immediately asked for an inquiry uh, to be set up, an independent inquiry into that festival uh, and what happened leading up to that weekend. The report was due to be uh, hopefully out by the end of last month. Uh, unfortunately, the organiser was away on holiday and uh, since then I've had uh, contact me by him directly to me, excuse me, <coughs> me and the council. Uh, explaining that his mother is seriously ill and very ill. So in terms of being fair and in terms of natural justice, I've made the decision to put off the report for a number of weeks until we get uh, his contribution and hear his side of the story. What I will commit to is that the uh, report will be published, it will be open, it will be transparent and, and it will uh, be honest. I just go um, I thought to myself, well, you know, in regards to our approach to that particular uh, report, I just wanted to ask people, do you know what this is? It's, it's a bottle of Peroni. A bottle of Peroni. And you might say, well, what's that got to do with it? Well, let me remind you of how uh, the previous administration conducted reports. And I, I keep a lot of information, I always keep things 
Act like one and park lots of things here. 